Three again. <laughs> All of the things that somebody would do if they wanted to contract COVID, I unknowingly did all of those things before I knew that he had it. We drank from the same water bottle, I finished his food for him, we take naps together, he accidentally coughs in my face. <laughs> When Susanna Luck's son tested positive for COVID-19 last spring, she thought there's no way she'd escape the virus. I tested negative six times. And with each you know, subsequent time that I would test negative, I, uh, I would just think this is unbelievable. And um, you know, I, I challenged science to uh, explain this. which is why Luck sent scientists saliva samples to examine her DNA. She's taking part in an international study looking into why some people never get COVID-19. Each participant must show they've had direct exposure to the virus, were not vaccinated at the time, and have never tested positive. My primary question is whether I am naturally genetically immune to COVID. Those saliva samples will make their way here to this research lab where McGill scientists, along with other scientists around the world, are trying to figure out whether genetic factors play a role in making some people immune or resistant to this coronavirus. And already, they have some clues. Wow. So what happens is that each one of these vials is cells from a patient. We have patients who have severe disease, patients who have mild disease, but in this case, we also have patients who are resistant. And these cells are cryopreserved so that they're still alive when we thaw them out. Once we have an idea of possible genes... Dr. Donald Bin is an infectious disease specialist and medical microbiologist at McGill University in Montreal. Inside those frozen vials are cells which house genes that help shape a person's traits. So these are really important. They're almost like the, you know, the database. <laughs> this is our goal. This is our gold mine. Every person we see, we need to get these cells and we need to freeze them down. Genes are passed from one generation to the next. They give cells specific instructions, like a recipe for making proteins. Proteins are the building blocks for everything in your body, from bones and blood to powering muscles and fighting infections. We don't think that this is going to be one gene that's found across the world. We think that there will be, in different populations, different genes that account for resistance. But somehow, we think that those genes will be linked together in some sort of same functional pathway. In other words, we'll find different pieces, but they're all in the same puzzle. My father was a coal miner, a lumberjack, a fisherman in Atlantic Canada. His father was the same thing. They all work really, really hard in the whole life, and I've always believed in the same thing. So I've never seen anything special within the family tree. Nothing special, except that 65-year-old Hugh Potter rarely gets sick. Over a year ago, he had no idea his wife, Lynn, had COVID-19. We never did anything different, ate at the same table, watched TV together. While she had, we thought it was a chest flu. Tried to cover it up as best as I could, but I was very, very sick. Very. And yet, she didn't worry about Hugh getting infected. I knew he wouldn't. I just knew. I mean, if the kids got chicken pox and he didn't, and I've had the flu, I've had really bad colds, I've had pneumonia, he never gets it, any of it, ever. Potter still got vaccinated, but he's excited to find out if his genes will reveal a piece of the larger COVID-19 puzzle. A little proud in a, in a way, maybe a little special. Being able to maybe one day help many, many people, it gives you a, a little bit of a upper chest kind of, right? 
which is, which is a good thing in life. So this is our minus 80 freezer. Samples from people like Potter have in the past helped researchers come up with treatments that fight other infections, including malaria, norovirus, and HIV. Like the coronavirus, HIV must latch onto receptors on our cells in order to get inside and cause an infection. But some people have gene mutations that don't allow this to happen. What happens in HIV is that receptor in the people who are resistant is mutant. It's not expressed properly. And that means that the virus can't attach. So that means that you can, you can then give a medication like that molecule that's, mi that's missing and prevent the, the HIV virus from attaching into onto cells. Oh, okay. Scientists so, yeah, hope I, they're getting closer yes, to yes. finding a similar mechanism for COVID-19. So how might that work? So there are some potential clues in that, you know, when we talk about the virus attaching to the cells and we talk about some receptors, it looks like maybe some of those uh, internal proteins may be uh, part of the solution. Again, it's, it's a little too early to know. But many are eager for answers. I would like to learn if I am naturally resistant to COVID and expand that to other people as well. I think somewhere in the human genome, through people like you, I think they could find something that could help an awful lot of people. These are the needles in the haystack that tell us something. There's a, there's a biological lesson to be learned on that person, but we gotta, we gotta find out what that lesson is. And they're determined. McGill researchers are hoping to see results from their study as early as this fall. Okay, so Christine, I, I guess we've heard from some people in your story who've, who've never had COVID, clearly, but, but how many people are we actually talking? Like, how big is this study? Researchers have heard from tens of thousands of people. And remember, this is a global study. So far, there are 40,000 people who have met the criteria. Here in Canada, it's about 100. But those researchers at McGill are still recruiting as they go. Ultimately, they want to have enough data so they can narrow down what's at play and come up with treatments. And it's worth remembering, we're two years into this. There aren't a lot of treatments for COVID-19. This virus is going to be with us for the foreseeable future. These scientists have have proven track records, so a lot of people are very eager to see what they come up with. Indeed. Christine, thanks a lot. You're welcome.